Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, a second blast of wintry weather in less than a week. Another winter storm is headed in our direction. We'll let you know when this winter storm starts, how much snow you'll see, and who has the best chance to see quite a bit of ice coming up. We're going to be ready to deal with whatever Mother Nature brings us. Plus, equity on every level. We must ensure the honor system is applied consistently and fairly. The practices at Virginia Military Institute that are now under review. Rain or shine, one Lynchburg group continues to show their support for the military. I'm Tim Harfman. I'll tell you how they marked a milestone. And good evening. The week started out with clouds and lots of rain and then changed to sunshine and just a little taste of warm weather. Oh, really enjoyed that. But then yeah. winter returned with a vengeance in the middle of the week. But it did leave behind some picturesque sights. Now we are gearing up for another round of winter weather. Yeah, we sure are. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Handwich joins us now. Jeff, everyone is under a winter storm watch, right? That is correct. From 10 p.m. Saturday through 10 p.m. Sunday, everybody under a winter storm watch in advance of expecting to see heavy mixed precipitation along with slick roads. That's going to make travel almost impossible. OK, we are looking at uh, conditions really deteriorating for us here as we head into Saturday night. Here's a look at the satellite and radar composite for us right now. We're dry. We're going to stay dry here tonight into tomorrow and then our next storm system our next big weather maker is situated really from the Rocky Mountain states and points to the west and it is going to head to the east and as it does certainly going to be a huge player in our weather here Saturday night Sunday maybe even into Monday morning your weekend plan are showing temperatures on Saturday 41 clouds thicken throughout the day Saturday but Saturday you're good Sunday is when we're going to certainly have some wintry weather maybe dry slotted for part of the day on Sunday uh, you'll see that here on our impact timeline I'm thinking that the highest threat for heavy precipitation snow sleet and freezing rain will likely lie for us 2 a.m. through 2 p.m. on Sunday. So it's really Saturday night into, say, the midday hours of Sunday. Then a dry spell may begin for us after about 2 p.m. and last into the mid-evening hours before one more batch of snow moves in later into the evening hours into the overnight Sunday night into early Monday. So what to expect here? Yes, a winter storm is likely for us. More snow north, more mixing south, and everybody's going to be dealing with messy roads. So please bear that in mind. John. All right, thank you, Jeff. Well, these chilly temperatures have complicated things as the Department of Transportation prepares for this weekend's winter weather. And the snow that's already on the ground isn't helping either. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder joins us live tonight. Annie, how do they plan to clear the roads? Well, John and Brittany, to be quite frank with you, a lot of our roads may not be pre-treated before this storm because it's just too cold outside. Now, according to the Virginia Department of Transportation, it can become hard to pre-treat roads when temperatures are below freezing, which we have seen a lot of this week. VDOT is closely monitoring the storm and will be working 12-hour shifts to clear whatever wintry mix we see throughout the weekend. As we've seen in past storms, main roads and highways will still have top priority for plowing. You know, in any winter weather event, our top priority is always the interstates and primary roads. Those are the ones numbered 1 through 599. Those roads carry the most traffic, and as long as the snow continues to fall or precipitation is, is ongoing, we're going to be focusing our efforts on those routes. Now, VDOT says they will be providing updates on road conditions through social media and the 511 website all weekend long. And of course, we will be bringing you all the latest on the expected winter weather here on the air and over on our 10 News app. Live in Roanoke tonight, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Other news tonight after calls for diversity and an investigation into claims of racism at Virginia Military Institute, the school is reviewing its student-led judicial system. Tonight, 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett joins us from Lexington. So what do we know about the review process, Lindsay? John, ever since that state mandated investigation was announced, the school has taken a hard look at diversity. Now it's going to review how the school handles investigations into honor code violations. Cadets at VMI are held to a strict honor code. Those found guilty of breaking it face expulsion. A cadet 
will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate anyone who does. In an effort to promote diversity and equity, the school's first black leader, Major General Cedric Wins, has identified five outcomes to focus on, including honor. We must ensure the honor system is applied consistently and fairly. VMI is reviewing its honor court system, the student-led judicial review process. The Washington Post reports that 43% of expelled cadets were black, even though African Americans only make up 6% of the student population. VMI spokesman Colonel Bill Wyatt says there are so few honor code violation cases, it's hard to get an accurate correlation, and one case can skew the data. We don't believe that the process is, is targeting any one individual or type of individual. VMI plans to review how they investigate reported violations, consider requiring a unanimous jury decision, and is looking at modifying its drumming out ceremonies when cadets are expelled to comply with federal privacy laws. But one thing that won't change is the single sanction honor system, meaning if you're found guilty, you will be expelled. Though we must live by the honor code, we must also be honorable. Racism, sexism, and homophobia are not honorable. We must rid the Institute of all of these. The school's new diversity committee met today to talk about next steps. It's planning to hire a chief diversity officer by May 1st and create a diversity dashboard to get data about cadets, faculty and staff so that they have a better understanding of the makeup of VMI and where they go from here. Reporting live in Lexington, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News working for you. Our region is nearing 80,000 total coronavirus cases, and we've seen quite a few outbreaks contributing to that number, especially in jails. The Roanoke City Jail is dealing with that after nearly 70 members and inmates, staff members rather, and inmates tested positive. Facility officials say they don't know the source, and inmates' family members are frustrated. Let my son have to be transported from the city jail to the city hospital. We're going to have a problem. The Department of Health is working to vaccinate people in these facilities. The Western Virginia Regional Jail vaccinated 250 inmates, but that has not happened in Roanoke's jail yet. In a statement, the local health district said in part, we have plans to vaccinate all of our correctional jails in the district. We believe this is a critical social justice issue. Teachers and people 65 and older reached the front of the line to get their vaccines in Danville today. The city and Pennsylvania County vaccinated just under 900 people this morning. They want to vaccinate at least 80% of the population. Still to come, uncomfortable conversations that are important to have. The issues two of Virginia Tech's first black female students faced in the classroom. Two women who paved the way for countless others at Virginia Tech talked about their experiences of, ra of racism. It's a part of the university's unfinished conversation series. Roanoke native Laverne Hairston Higgins and Marguerite Harper Scott were among the first black women to attend. Both enrolled at VT in 1966, two of only six black women to attend that first year. Today, Higgins talked about experiences of prejudice in the classroom from an unexpected source. The hardest part was the faculty. I literally had a faculty member who, after he gave his introduction to the class and he was giving, going over the syllabus, turn and look directly at me and say, and some of you will not pass this class. And I had not experienced that before. Scott graduated from Virginia Tech in 1970, while Higgins transferred out of the school after Martin Luther King's assassination in 1968. Nearly two decades of honoring our nation's heroes. I thought it would last as long as the troops are overseas. We were going to be here. The motivation behind the Monument Terrace troop. Beautiful sunset happening right now at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport. We will let you know, though, when that sun will turn to clouds and eventually snow coming up in your local weather authority forecast. A thousand consecutive Fridays of supporting our military. Lynchburg's Monument Terrace Troop Rally celebrated that major milestone. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman talks to the veterans who have been gathering since week one. 
Rain, sleet, snow or shine, the Monument Terrace Troop Rally has gathered in this spot every week since 2001 and a few have been here since the very beginning. More than 100 people showed up for the milestone Friday, 1,000 consecutive weeks. Steve Bozeman helped organize the first rally and says they were supporting the military after the terrorist attacks of September 11th, but he didn't think it last this long. We thought maybe 500 would be it, but once we got in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq and then back in Af Af Afghanistan again, uh, just kept going one Friday after another, so we kept showing up. This Vietnam vet earned two Purple Hearts and says he's attended practically every rally because he made a promise when he returned home. When I came back from Vietnam, I wanted to make sure that the next generation of warriors who go to war, which, which was 9-11, uh, I said, I'm going to come down here and support these guys. Len Glazier has also stood at Monument Terrace each week for nearly two decades. Why? Because <sighs> of what my dad went through to make it free. His father was a D-Day vet who stormed Normandy. Glazier himself served in the Navy in the 60s. For him, this weekly vigil has become a family. You can't be with more patriotic people than down here. He plans on coming back down here to support the troops. I thought it would last as long as the troops are overseas. We were going to be here. And as the rallies continue, the group will mark their 20th anniversary in late November, somewhere around the 1043rd consecutive rally. In Lynchburg, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. It is all quiet on the satellite and radar composite for us right now. Hardly any cloud cover in the sky throughout the day today, but to the west, that is where we have our next weather maker really extending from Texas all the way west towards the west coast. This is going to be impacting us here Saturday night into Sunday with some wraparound moisture impacting us here Sunday night into early Monday. So future tracker showing overnight tonight quiet tomorrow during the daylight hours is quiet. We're going to see those clouds thickening. We're going to turn mostly cloudy here heading into the afternoon. We're going to have maybe one little precursor event bringing a band of snow into the region tomorrow evening, but the main energy with this comes in after midnight. OK, by around 2, 3, 4 a.m. We're going to certainly start to see more snow into our areas, say towards the Highlands, New River Valley and Mountain Empire. This is around 7 a.m. Sunday, seeing a lot of snow around, but by 7 a.m. We actually start to see that changeover into our westernmost and into our southernmost counties over to some freezing rain and sleet as we head, say, towards lunchtime on Sunday. Could really start to see the changeover to freezing rain and sleet along the 460 corridor while up, say, towards the highlands and southern Shenandoah. It's still snow. We're going to get a break, I think, mid afternoon on Sunday before one more little round of snow pushes in, mainly towards the mountains, Sunday night into early Monday. Now, as far as snowfall accumulation, Saturday night into Sunday, areas in pink, that's where we're going to see the most towards the highlands and southern Shenandoah, six to 10 inches of snow there. Over towards Lynchburg, Roanoke, Blacksburg, Amherst, Bedford. We're forecasting four to eight inches of snow. Areas in light blue, this includes Smith Mountain Lake. Areas in and around Rocky Mount, Floyd, Pulaski, Withville, Hillsville, Galax, two to five inches of snow. And areas in white, Danville, South Boston, Charlotte Courthouse, Independence, Rural Retreat. You're looking at a coating to two inches plus. There could be some isolated spots in white that see perhaps three inches of snow. Snowfall totals so far this year below average for most. Blacksburg, you've seen a little bit more than average through this date. You're around what you normally see in Danville, but Roanoke and Lynchburg, you're well below normal, but that could change here at the snap of a finger come Sunday. We're also looking at ice accumulation. Where you see the most snow, you're only looking at a glaze possible. Highland, Southern Shenandoah, it's mainly snow. Lynchburg, Roanoke, Blacksburg, Floyd, Pulaski could get a glaze up to perhaps a tenth of an inch of icing in areas in purple. That's where we could see upwards of a quarter of an inch of ice into most of Southside and also into parts of Bland with Grayson and Carroll County. So ice is certainly going to be a factor in this as well. It's going to be a significant ice for some of us as we could have some icy roads and some outages, especially in areas that don't see as much snow. Expected road conditions Saturday evening. That one batch of snow that could get in here before the actual main event could make some difficult roadways. But for the most part, through Saturday afternoon, we're going to be fine. Saturday evening, that changes. Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening, the roads are going to be a complete and total mess. Okay, so don't go out and about on Sunday. 
Sunday. Okay, just stay inside. 20 right now, Hot Springs, 30 Withville, 33 Martinsville, 35 in Danville. Tonight, clear, cold, and calm. Overnight lows in the teens and lower 20s. For tomorrow, a little bit warmer for us. Highs in the mountains, 30s to near 40. Outside the mountains, low to mid 40s. Clouds thicken tomorrow. Sunday's our winter storm. <laughs> Again, start Saturday night. Monday, some leftover snow showers possible early in the day, mainly towards the mountains. Tuesday, Wednesday, dry. Late Thursday into next Friday, we will have the chance for rain as temperatures do moderate by the end of next week. All right, we'll see. John Chaney passes away at the age of 89. Legendary Temple basketball coach. Women's basketball action tonight and Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr. Now the senior advisor to Rob Manfred. <laughs> Nightly news coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.